Hi folks, Mr. Robeson here, Calculus. Uh, we're just going to add to our integration toolbox today. So we're going to look at a technique called total substitution for integration. We're going to look at some other tricky integrals where we do some sort of substitution. And we're going to go over the rest of the rules for trig functions. So all the trig functions have their own integration rules. All right, so sometimes the getting our, our u and our du and that sort of stuff doesn't match up very well. So for instance, if we try this guy, like the first thing I would usually try is say u is x plus 1, just what's inside here. And then du equals dx, and we're still left with this 2x on top. All right, so that didn't seem like that worked too well. So maybe we'll try something else. Maybe we'll, we'll square this guy out, and this would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. And maybe we'll try u equals that. And then du would equal 2x plus 2. Well, we've got a 2x, but we can't add. We can't add to try and match our du's. I suppose I should put a dx there. There we go. All right, so that doesn't work. All right, we just can't add in here because it doesn't work because it's times dx. All right, so, hmm. I mean, we could try the top, but that's still not going to help us with the bottom or anything like that. So then what we try and do instead is something called total substitution all right and this often works if like the power in the bottom or the degree in the bottom is the same as the degree in the top like forgetting about this x one out here but if these two have the same degree oftentimes we'll do total substitution so what we do now is we go back to this guy and we say well if u equals x plus one then x equals u minus one so I know I've got an x, I can't get rid of that was stuck up here, but now I can use this to get rid of it. All right, so we're, we're going to disregard this completely. So we're going to do total substitution. So in here, I'm going to plug in u, and for this x on top, I'm going to plug in u minus 1. So I'm going to get the integral of 2 u minus 1 over u squared, and dx is just equal to du, like that. So if we want, we can bring the 2 out front here. And we'll have 2 times the integral of u minus 1 over u squared du, like that. Now, we've said before, if there's ever just one term on the bottom, we can just go ahead and divide. So we'll get 2 times the integral of u over u squared, so that's 1 over u, minus 1 over u squared, which is u to the negative 2 du. All right, the reason why I left this guy on the bottom like this is because this is the how the log rule works. And the reason why I wrote this one as to an exponent is because this is how the power rule works. So we get 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of u minus 2 times, and the 2's from here, u to the 1 higher exponent, so negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. So this negative and that negative cancel each other out. And now we just go back to x's. So we've got 2 times the natural log of u was x plus 1, absolute value of x plus 1, plus 2 times u to the negative 1. So it would be 2 over x plus 1 plus c like that. And if we want to, we could bring in the 2 here, and then we don't have to write the absolute value anymore. So we could say this is the natural log of x plus 1 squared. Since it's squared, we don't need the absolute value anymore plus 2 over x plus 1 plus c, like that. So this is total substitution. It is a nice little trick to use sometimes. It, it comes up maybe once in AP exam or so. All right, but it usually happens when these two degrees are the same. So look for that. That's helpful. All right, so some more tricky things with integration rules. Let's switch colors here. All right, so check to see if it follows the basic integration rule. All right, well, we don't have a great integration rule for 1 over x ln of x dx try some sort of substitution, okay? And if that doesn't work, we try total substitution or using some trig identity to simplify. And if that doesn't work, we've got more let methods that'll come later. So if we try substitution, we could try the whole bottom. And then du would be, oh gosh, we've got to do a product rule. So it'd be first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So we'd get one plus ln of x, and I guess all of that is times dx. We definitely don't have that. So that's not going to work for us. Hmm, so we've got to do something else. What if we just used 
the natural log is our u, because we don't know how to take any natural log integrations. But what if we just said u equals the natural log of x? And then du would be 1 over x dx. Well, we've got our dx, and here right here is a 1 over x, right? x on the bottom, x on the bottom. That's what we want. So this u is on the bottom, and we can rewrite this integral now as the integral, and we can say that this is 1 over u, and then this and this together is our du. Or we can put the du on top. It's really fine either way. But that is our natural log of u, absolute value of u, plus c. And then we plug back into there, which was this guy right here. So we're getting the natural log of the absolute value of the natural log of x plus c. Natural logs inside of natural logs. It happens. It might be the nightmare for some of you. I don't know, but you know, it's okay. All right, next one. Tangent of x. Seems simple enough, right? Well, we don't have any basic rules for tangent yet. Substitution, I can say u is tangent, then du would be secant squared. I got nothing to work with. All right, we can't add in x's. We can't multiply by x's in there for du's. That doesn't work. Total substitution, still not going to help us. Maybe a trig identity will. What do I know tangent's equal to? Well, if I remember right, tangent is sine over cosine. Hey, wait a minute. I can then say u is the bottom, now that I have a fraction, and then du, derivative of cosine, is negative sine. I always forget if it's positive or negative, but it's negative because cosine starts off going down. So I need a negative here and a negative there, and now I've got it. There's my du. So we get negative the integral du over u. So we get negative ln of the absolute value of u plus c, or negative ln of the absolute value of cosine, like that, plus c. Or if I bring this negative 1 up here, cosine to the negative 1 is secant. So I could say this is also equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c. So either one of those is fine for an answer, and this often happens with the trigs. So whenever we're doing trig integrals, there's multiple answers because of all the trig identities. But either one of these is fine on the AP exam. All right, so now that we know how to do co... Actually, that was tangent. Now we know how to do can tangent. They said negative ln of cosine here. We could also say it's the ln of the absolute value of secant. That also works. All right, so we already did sine is negative cosine, and we already did cosine is positive sine. So now that's how we do tangent. Cotangent would work the same way. We'd say it's cosine of x over sine of x, like that and we would do that integral. Secant of x and cosecant of x are a little more intensive with what we would have to do to get those, but this is how it works out. We can just memorize those rules. It's the ln of the secant plus tangent, an absolute value, plus c. Cosecant is the negative, remember the c's always end up with those negative signs, of the ln of cosecant plus cotangent, plus c. All right, so let's take a look at these two examples here, and I think that's it for this video. So the square root of 1 plus tangent squared. All right, well, if I remember right, 1 plus tangent squared is just secant squared. And it's usually easy to work with one trig function. So this would just be the square root of secant squared. And the square root of secant squared is just secant. Technically, it's absolute value, but on this interval, secant's already positive because cosine's positive there. So we don't need the absolute value. So now we can just say, this is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant of x dx. And now I've got my rule here for secant right there. So this will be the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. So now i got to plug in pi over 4 ln of the secant of pi over 4 plus the tangent of pi over 4 minus the ln of the secant of 0 plus the tangent of 0. Let's say tangent of 0 is 0, secant of 0 is 1. So ln of 1 is just all going to be 0. So we're just basically getting this part right here. If you want to work that out, you can. If you want to leave it like that, you can. Tangent of pi over 4, I know, is 1. 
secant of pi over 4 is the square root of 2. So we would get the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 2 is what we actually get. But again, this is okay on the AP exam to leave it like that. All right, next one, because I know some of us don't like working out trig. Cosine of 3x. Well, we have a rule for cosine of u. Let's just make this u. du is 3 dx, so times 3 in here. Put a 1 -third out there to cancel it. We get 1 -third the integral of cosine of u du. So that's 1 -third. Integral of cosine is sine. So sine of u plus c. And then we go back to x's. 1 -third sine of 3x plus c. And there we go. Done. All right, so that's our trig rules now. So now we know the, the rules for all of our trig functions and some other substitution type things and total substitution.